Good evening. I decided to try something very, not challenging, but it has a lot of ingredients. So, but oh, so yummy. Get out a piece of paper and a pen, because get ready. We're going to have some banana. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to you. It is totally gluten-free, as always. But it has a lot of different flours, a lot of different things to make a gluten-free flour, you know, connect and actually hold together. That's the key with a gluten-free recipe. You can use gluten-free flour, but if it doesn't have the binder in there, it's not it's going to fall apart on you. And that's why I have so much trouble figuring out a good tortilla recipe. When I get to the perfect tortilla recipe, it's going to be right here. That's right. It's coming. Because my husband loves his tortillas. He likes the flour ones. Not so much. So I have to make the gluten-free flour ones. And they got to be just. Make sure you hide it. No, not, not just the dessert when it's done, but the ingredients. I, you ready? Here we go. What you need for the. You're going to need your iron skillet, this guy. That's right. We're bringing out skillet for dessert. I'm not just the yummy ribs, right? In the skillet, you're going to put one. <laughs> it's, a, it's a stick of butter. Actually, it's half a stick. But a quarter cup. Quarter cup butter. And three... Fourths of a cup of packed brown sugar. As I have taken that brown sugar in there, and you're going to put it on the heat, and you're going to let that melt down to it's like a golden, caramely color, which the brown sugar is already dark, and it's dark brown sugar, by the way. Then you take, when that is at that caramely brown color, then you're going to put your bananas in here. Uh -huh. Now, my pan's not there. With that brown sugar, you're going to take a tablespoon of rum or rum extract. So if you're under 21, use rum extract. Alcohol, actually, when you cook with it, it burns off. <laughs> of rum and a teaspoon of vanilla. And you drizzle this on the bananas. So you have this rum flavor on the top and all through it. Because there's another tablespoon of rum. So one tablespoon of the rum goes with the bananas in the skillet. And if you've ever made upside down pineapple cake, this is the same kind of thing because you invert it after it's done. The recipe calls for two cups of gluten-free flour. And I'm going to show you the items that I used. Okay. Gluten-free flour. Two cups. Okay, and then we have a quarter cup of rice flour, plus you add two tablespoons, the fourth of a cup plus the two tablespoons, two teaspoons of powder, and get away from the processed stuff as much as possible, and then the, uh, it's called Thrive Market. They have everything. They have everything gluten-free, natural, you name it. And uh, this is the dark brown sugar. You're also going to need, which is optional. If you don't like coconut, you don't need the coconut. For at the end, there is unsweetened coconut that's toasted. To toast coconut, there is a, a trick to it. You use the same temperature on your oven. You're going to set your oven for 375 degrees for this lovely yummy dessert. It's evenly or the same. So make sure you don't burn your coconut. And if you like coconut cream pie, that's how you toast your coconut. That's for another dessert, isn't it? Okay. And of course, don't. this is for those that are over 21, and I'm just kidding. Because it does burn off. It gives that rum flavor. Um, there is also, a, you know, rum extracts out there. I, uh, this is a dark, it's a black spiced rum, matter of fact. This is really good. The sugar, baking powder, cinnamon, and I've blended them together. Now, you also need two eggs at room temperature. And you're probably wondering, what is that nasty stuff in that? Well, it goes in there. And uh, <laughs> mm. 
Yeah, that's the two tablespoon. And you want to this up because once that's ready, this goes in with it. This is your batter top, your tasty part. This is like a rum cake with bananas, but with drizzled caramel on top. Okay. I could put this in a blender, but we never had blenders growing up. We had the, the crank thing, hand blender thing. I want one so bad. I would love for someone to give me one for Christmas. Because I don't use my electric one very often. I'm finding out that I don't. I use the whisk. And I like the whisk, but I would rather go like this, you know? It's like a toy for me. So I've got in my food processor um, all my dry ingredients. And I've blended them. I've pulsed it a few times. <laughs> Get them mixed in there together real good. Now, to put into this, it become the batter part, six tablespoons of cold butter. I take all of my butter out. Unsalted butter. You want to use unsalted butter. And I'm going to get a knife here. And so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if you've ever made homemade pie crust or buttercrumb topping, this is what how I do my buttercrumb topping also, is that you, for buttercrumb topping, the butter's got to be room temperature, you know, softened. And you use a pastry blender to make the little pea-sized lumps, and that's what you end up rolling into your um, uh, pastry or your pie crust. So I'm just cutting quarter-inch chunks of this. So when I put it in the processor, it still does that and the bananas uh, on the on the stove or on the uh, on the burner. As soon as it's ready, it takes three minutes to do that to melt the brown sugar with the butter. Um, take it off the heat, then put your bananas in it right away. Yep, and drizzle that rum on there. And what you're doing, I'm gonna pulse it. Well, actually, I'm going to blend it. Let's see that it has the kind of lumpy look, like like gravy. Then you're ready to add it to the thing. I'm going to take my uh, spatula and just kind of like double check down into it because sometimes I don't see. Yeah, I still got little lumps. That's the way it should look. Just like that. Now, this, you're going to watch with your food processor because that comes out. The blades will pop out like that. It's supposed to, but. You don't want it to fall out on your on your hands. Okay. So that has a buttery smell. It smells really good. I'm gonna move this out of the way. It's a lock in place. Put that back there. Thanks for me. I'm trying to organize it. And this is when I get dirty. <laughs> That's the fun part. Oh, all natural vanilla. Um, is oh, one of those. So if, if you miss something, you can comment and I can have it, you know, boom, right there for you. Um, what I could do is actually put it on the, on the comment section for everybody. So I've got my cold butter to get the base for my, basically the crust part or the cookie part of it. And I'm adding a quarter cup of buttermilk. If you don't make a buttermilk type of milk, or you take, if you need, I've even done it with orange juice and it makes it really good, but you take a tablespoon of lemon juice, put it in your measuring cup, and then you fill it with milk until it reaches a cup. And you'll see it'll start to get like thick. That makes, that's what buttermilk is. It's not curled, but it, it thickens it and gives it, you take one teaspoon to make the quarter cup of, of buttermilk, one teaspoon of lemon juice or lime juice, and then you fill it with milk up until it reaches room temperature eggs. And 
I'm going to put I'm going to put it into this powder mixture a little bit at a time using the spatula to mix it together. I need to put this in the sink or make a mess. Where are they? I'm already making a mess. Got flour all over me. So you just slowly drizzle it to get it to a. If you've ever made any kind of homemade pastry or rolled cookies, this is kind of how you, you do. You get it to a certain point and then you flour your hands up and then you roll it and then you use your cookie cutter. So that should. Okay. And I'm going to do this. Now, this is very reminiscent of pie crust. It really is. It's not pie crust. I have to taste authentic. <laughs> and I'm an old Irish girl and I got my Spanish stuff. But that's okay. I love Spanish food. I love that abom de gas soup that I made. It has balls in it that my mother in law was talking about that. Okay. And zip, get it. Okay, it's cooled enough this time. And I've just got them. And since I didn't have my four bananas, it's not full. So my, if my husband doesn't like it, it's his fault. Just like this. And you're probably wondering, well, why didn't you roll it out? Well, because you don't, you know, in making a paint, a pie, excuse me, when you make pie, you seal the edges when you have a two crust pie. You're going to do the same thing with this. Even with another pie. It's kind of like a pie, but not a pie. And this creates the cake. I cannot wait. Because when you invert this, you have to have a nice smooth bottom, you know, flat bottom. To go onto the plate that you're going to insert to. If you have a uh, kind of large uh, serving plate, so to seal the edges, you suck that. Some brown sugar trying to sneak out of there. I don't do that. That's okay. Because that's what's going to show me that I, I did that part. It's going to be ooey gooey yummy. This goes in the sink. And this. Is on top here. Now, oopsie. If your store has what you're looking for, and you can always find stuff, everything's online anyway. Um, I there's potato starch is an, is an ingredient that's in this a lot. I couldn't find potato starch anywhere. So I, because you Google, you say substitute. I always do that. It's a chef's prerogative for the country cook in this case. Like this. Now, can you see where it's right butt up along the edge? There's no gaps. There's no holes. Now, the oven is set, like I said, at 375. I lost. <laughs> Hi, yo. And then we're going to do the caramel sauce. Oh, it's over here. Okay. Because in the 375, but this actually goes on top of it. Most of the time, like with the skillet ribs, those messy ones that are so good, you just put that in, in the oven, right? This has to go on parts of your paper on top of a tray. The skillet gets very hot. And if it's not ha doesn't have a diffuser in between, it'll get too too hot and it will burn whatever's in there. And you don't want that to happen. So Parchment paper, yeah. Some people think you can use wax paper in the oven like this. I wouldn't advise it. Wax paper burns, and it really does burn. And you don't want your smoke alarm going off, because mine does when I'm in the kitchen at least. Ah, probably every couple of weeks, because we have a very sensitive smoke alarm in here. So you put your parchment paper on your tray. Then you're... Paper goes down, down. Remember, I told you five to eight minutes. It's about five to eight minutes when you put it. And typically, you're going to use about half a cup. So, if you toast more than half a cup, that's okay. 
you can always put your extra toasted coconut in a Ziploc bag. It's vacuum sealed. Keeps the air out of it. And it will stay like it is when you first finish it for a lot longer time. Uh, yeah, because I know that I'll use it and other things pretty quick. Okay, that's about... Mm, that oven's been preheated for quite a while. So I'm going to pop this in. Then we're going to do the caramel sauce recipe. I've already made it, but I'm going to go over it with you how to, how to make it. I was trying to save time today, and I ran out of time. Happens. Okay. Here's the coconut timer. There it is. All I need to do is remember that when that coconut goes off, because you, if you put them in there together, I need to subtract eight minutes and put the remainder of that on the clock. So what I will do is I will put 20, 20 minutes on the clock on the timer when it goes off for the coconut. But, you know, I love caramel. And I had no idea how easy it was to actually make. I always took it and I go, that's what's in it? Whole sprung dilly which is dessert. You need about 15 minutes of your time. <laughs> a half a cup of firmly packed brown sugar. You need a cup of heavy cream. Heavy whipping cream is probably what you'll see in the stores. Syrup, the heavy cream, the brown sugar, and you put it in a small pan for about 15 minutes. At 15 minutes, you end up with what's called softball stage. If you have a candy thermometer, awesome. I can't find one. So I have to do it old school way. Or you take a cup of ice water, cooked it 15 minutes, and you take that sauce and you take a, just the tip of the spoon and drop a drop in there, and it makes this little ball, that softball. If it was hardball stage, it would go plop. <laughs> you don't want hardball stage. I go, oh my gosh. I'm in love. I want to pour this into a measuring cup yeah. and show you the consistency what it what is basically called softball. You all see this? I'm gonna bring it close. Yeah, see this yummy stuff. Yeah, yum. <laughs> now you can make your own caramel sauce for your ice cream sundaes. Wouldn't that be fabulous? I gotta check on the coconut because I'm just thinking about it. And I got this big old pumpkin thing in here. This time, <laughs> I didn't have to wait that long. Uh, let's see. So, that long. Three minutes at, three, at 375, and I have perfect toasted. See how there's some of it's like kind of white, but there's a lot of the gold color to it? That is perfect toasted coconut right there. Awesome. I'm supposed to have uh, unsweetened, or so I think this is sweetened, but that's not unfortunate. I like the sweet. This will be perfect. Absolutely perfect. Um, I think that you're going to serve that, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> that you're going to put your skillet banana or rum banana tort on. And the coconut goes down first. Just like the pineapple, upside down pineapple uh, cake. And you take your skillet. Be careful. I did that wrong. <laughs> and then you invert your skillet. After it's cooled for 30 to 35 minutes on a wire rack, it's too easy. So when your torta is finished, you have a wire rack to let it cool on for 30 to 35 minutes. That's when, come on, rack, stuff in here. That's the amount of time it takes for an iron skillet to cool to. It does not feel good. It never feels like it's healing. <laughs> you know. But this, these, these little guys, I wish I had like four of them. Especially right now in cookie baking time. I've got care packages I'm making for family that are every other ones I've seen in the store now, they don't have the legs. They just they're just like kind of flat. But this is the air circulation that helps it cool faster. Okay? So you have and you bring it out. 
we have a plate with a piece of parchment paper on it ready for it. You're going to put that plate with the parchment paper on top of the skillet after it's cool. And then you take your decadently delicious caramel sauce. Bananas. Do you have a husband that has a habit of eating a lot of bananas? Hide them. Please. <laughs> Save yourself some aggravation. I had frozen some, but I didn't know if frozen ones would apply. I said, nah, that might be a little too mushy. <laughs> but I didn't have time to make the banana bread. So if you're wanting to do that, you don't have time. You know, I'm going to make banana bread with those. And you go, burn that, throw them in the freezer. It'll stop that process. And then take them out. You know, only three minutes. It'd be 20, 22 minutes. Timer. 22. One, two. Okay, so 22 minutes. The minute work will be ready. You all at least try this one. Because I'm dying to dig into it. I'm mad that I don't have enough bananas, but it's, you know. I didn't think about making it until after I realized. No, I had thought about it for a few days. So if you're thinking about making something, make sure you have all the ingredients. And like I said, if you got a husband who likes to munch and snack, he likes to do healthy snacks. He snacked on this this time. Although he did have yogurt this morning. <laughs> Hide your food. <laughs> Hide your fruit. If you've liked this dessert idea or have any kind of questions about the ingredients, because they're lots and I hand it out, please leave me a comment and I will make sure that you get it step by step in order a little bit easier than this one it's a little you know a lot of ingredients in a deep dish help it when i still only had three and i needed four i kind of upset the slices of your bananas should be an inch thick and you like i said you start center and you work your way out if you have four beans i've got some other goodies coming up i actually have a really delicious crock pot meal to share with you and uh can you believe that who doesn't like ham he doesn't my mother-in-law does father-in-law no they're perfect for one another bring <laughs> these bit these recipes i would love to hear from you is there something a taste that you like and i'm gonna put this out there for you is there a certain taste that you like and you don't know what to do with it. Like, let's say you like turmeric, you know, because it's like, that's what's in mustard. You like mustardy stuff. Throw that in the comments for me. Would you please me out with that? <laughs> I have to keep busy in my kitchen. And I keep busy barefoot. Because that's the most comfortable way. Is, you see, now I got to clean up the mess. But you know what? When we get to eat that, I'm still going to fuss at him about the bananas, yes. So, we get to, why don't you subscribe? And that way, I can continue to constantly bring you more good little treats. I think that would be a, a good thing, don't you? So let it barefoot in the kitchen. Come back as many times as you want and check out my other videos, too. It's gluten-free. That's how I maintain my, my healthy weight. And that is what I had to do. If you're struggling with your, you know, problems with your weight, blood pressure, blood sugar, try it. You can do it in baby steps. Just try a little. And some people say, gluten free, oh, I probably tasted that raw because it was the smart thing to do. This is a healthy channel. <laughs> At least I try. Yeah, I can give you the regular kind of recipes. If, you, if that's something, you, if you don't want to go gluten, you're just like, hey, well, how can I do that with the regular stuff? I can tell you, okay? If someone wants to make this with regular ingredients because you don't want to go out and buy them because you think it's, like, more expensive because it's more about you guys, right? I want you to be healthy, but if you're already healthy and you haven't had any issues for the thing that's now my norm, <laughs> enjoy every bit of time that you have with family right now and just have a wonderful safe and prayerfully healthy christmas my dad's not having such a healthy one but he's on the road to mending and i'm very thankful for that 
God bless you all for watching my channel and tell all your friends and get them to subscribe too, okay? Because I got more to show, but I would love to hear some suggestions. I don't think anybody else I've ever seen doing cooking that I know of ask for suggestions of what to cook, but I do because it's like you're in my house now. See, this is a country girl. I am a country cook. Doesn't matter where I am. And when we cooked in the country, we had tons of people over. And I'm inviting you to come cook with me. But always kick those views off. See you next time. Subscribe.